How's it going guys and welcome back to another video. I'm currently getting ready to head out on another cold weather truck camping adventure. It's looking like it's going to be about 10 degrees tonight so definitely on the colder side when it comes to camping but it should be awesome. I'm planning to cook a full meal from start to finish with my drawer setup. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous because this meal includes cutting up a mango which is something I've never done before. I promise you guys watching me attempt this will definitely be interesting. But yeah, I, uh, I'm loading up the truck now, I'm gonna head out and just super excited for another outdoor adventure. I have to tell you guys, I, uh, I've just been keeping most of my camping gear in my drawers back there. Um, all of the basic stuff like the cooking supplies and uh, first aid and just some of the other equipment that I always bring camping. I've just been leaving it in my drawers all the time. Um, and it's made it a lot easier. It's made the kind of prep time before some of these trips so much faster. So kind of having my gear in there permanently, um, yeah, it's just been awesome so far and made it a lot easier and a lot quicker to get out on some of these camping trips. So uh, I've got all of the gear packed up. I gotta go fill up on gas, um, always make sure when you're out on camping trips, anywhere off-roading, especially in the snow, make sure you have a full tank of gas. I know I've mentioned this in some of my videos, but I gotta go, gotta go fill up, and then we're gonna start driving. Um, if you guys remember, if you guys have watched my channel for a little bit, in the summer of 2023, I was doing a bunch of off-roading and camping uh, around the Bend, Oregon area. I found a whole bunch of spots that I have saved as pins. So today I'm gonna kind of revisit some of those spots and see if any of them are accessible. I have really no, no idea how much snow there's gonna be, so we're gonna go check them out. And uh, yeah, just head out on an adventure, do some cooking, should be awesome. Guys, do not let all of the sun you see behind me fool you. It is very cold outside and I have a feeling it's gonna be a cold night. Just fill up on gas, let's start driving. So one of the areas I'm thinking of checking out today, and I went here in one of my uh, videos from this past summer, but it's just this viewpoint with a nice view of the Sisters Mountains. We might not be able to see them today, they're kind of covered in clouds, but uh, depending on how much snow is out here, I may or may not go check that out. I went up here in the summer and decided not to camp because it was just super, super hot that day. It was like 100 degrees, and there's really no shade, so. It wasn't a great spot for a summer day. I'm gonna check out the trail once I get there and just see how much snow there is. I am by myself again today and if it's super deep snow and super wet and heavy snow, I may not go all the way up. Luckily though, um, there are a whole bunch of roads around this area down lower where I'm sure I can find a spot to set up and camp for the night. So, gonna start by checking out that trailhead and seeing if we can get up to the viewpoint. And if not, we'll find something down in the forest.
Well, I wasn't sure if we'd make it up here, but we did. Sequoia did awesome. I honestly am not sure if I could have made it with 33s. Some of that snow is really deep and really heavy. So having those bigger tires, having the 35 inch tires really has been coming in handy for all of these winter snow camping trips. So super stoked to be up here. Um, I'm hoping that this kind of hill protects us a little bit because it's been a little bit windy up here. There's been some big gusts and uh, wind is very, very cold, especially if it is gonna be down to like 10 degrees tonight. So yeah, just gonna get set up. Probably gonna start working on dinner because I have a lot to do here, but glad I made it up here. It's three o'clock and I'm gonna get started on some dinner. Um, I know this meal is probably gonna take a while, especially cooking out here, all the chopping and everything. And uh, I'm not the fastest cook. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and uh, try and make ourselves a fresh, warm meal out here at this amazing viewpoint. Tell you what guys, that wind when it comes ripping through here is very, very cold, I had to put a hat on. All right, so what we're making is just a mango brown rice and bean bowl. Right now we're just cooking the rice. Now I just added in some coconut milk and some vegetable broth. And we're gonna let this sit here for a little bit. Um, I'm trying to get it to a simmer right now and then we'll cover it and let it sit. It says for 40 minutes just to let the rice absorb all of the liquids. I'm just gonna turn the heat down a little bit, cover it and let it sit for a while. I just had to add some layers, it's starting to get very cold out here. Um, it's like 25 degrees. I just checked the thermometer. Yeah, cold. All right guys, so the rice is almost done. It has just a couple more minutes left. I need to cut up my mango so that we're ready to throw it in there and cook it for a little bit once the rice is done. Um, I have my mango here. gonna be interesting. I took screenshots of a tutorial. We'll see how this goes. Let's try it. <laughs> Let's try it. Midline, one quarter inch. 
Okay. There's one half. Now we do the same thing on the other side. Oh, I hit the pit. What is happening here? Well, that did not exactly work. This is not gonna be like you see in the pictures where they just perfectly cut it. But we'll try with this one. How hard could it be, right? See, then the people just like open it up and it all pops out. Maybe we didn't cut deep enough. Guys, how hard could it be? <laughs> it's pretty hard. <laughs> this is funny. Oh my gosh. As long as we get our mango in there, I'm gonna be happy, okay? As you guys can tell, I clearly am not a chef. Uh, but we're learning. We are learning. I don't usually cook a lot. And I'm attempting to cook something out of the back of my Toyota Sequoia while out in 20 degree weather. So it may not be pretty, it may not be perfect, but look at this. I have some mango cubes. Now sure, we may have wasted three quarters of the mango. <laughs> I got some mango, okay. Maybe this is still helpful to you guys. Maybe you can view it as a what not to do. And I think if you don't, if you, if you don't follow any of my steps, I think you might be fine, but clearly what I'm doing is not working. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is a little bit. I have a couple mango cubes. Better than nothing. Guys, this is actually so much better than I was expecting. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Everything was prepped and cooked out here, which is so cool to me. It's exactly why I designed this and exactly what I wanted this to be used for. I'm supposed to be doing dishes, but the sun's setting and I want to run up this hill real quick and see what it looks like because it is really pretty out here. So let's go up. All right guys, well I finally just got cleaned up from dinner. It is 5.40 and it's still light out, which is 
so awesome. I know I've talked about this in some of my uh, other truck camping videos, but I'm so excited for spring and summer and later sunsets, more daylight, time to just hang out and enjoy being outside. Every time I'm out here doing these trips and the sunset is later and later, I just get so excited because I'm, I'm so ready for spring and summer. But yeah, so it's 540, I just finished cleaning up. Um, man, this is turning into an ice sheet right here, guys. It's just a, <laughs> I drove over and just walking on it, I kind of pounded down all the snow and now it's just, <laughs> it's just solid ice. So that might be slippery in the morning, but um, super nice to be wrapped up and cleaned up before it gets dark. Just have some time to hang out now. Part of the reason I've been doing so much winter camping recently, I think all comes from the idea of just living in the present. That's something that's really, uh, really made an impact on me in my life is just focusing on right now. And it's so easy with things like camping to just say, oh, I'm gonna wait until it's warmer or I'm gonna wait until the days are longer. The nights are gonna be too long if I go in the winter. It's really easy to come up with all of these reasons why, why you shouldn't go. And I don't know, I just always try to remind myself that tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Life can change super fast. And I don't know, I've just been trying to take, take advantage of the opportunity I have now. And uh, I've gotten out on a lot more trips so far this year. And sure, some of the trips I have been very cold. Uh, the, nights, the nights when you're winter camping are very long. It's like 12 or 13 hours of darkness just to hang out in the back of your truck or SUV. Like, it's not ideal, I get that. But I've also had such an amazing time. And I, it would have been such a bummer if I just, if I, never, if I never went on those trips because I was just waiting for the perfect moment or warmer weather or whatever it would have been or whatever it might be. So I don't know, I just, uh, I think it's a good reminder that life is short and just to take advantage of the opportunity that you have now. If there's something you wanna do, it doesn't have to even be camping. It could, it could be maybe I wanna start a business. Maybe I wanna go back to school. Like, don't forget that things can change fast and opportunities you might have right now might not be there in the future. So that kind of got a lot deeper than I was meaning it to there, but I don't know. I've just been focusing a lot on living in the moment and I just wanted to share that with you guys. So I don't know, maybe it resonates with you, maybe it doesn't, but it's helped me get out on a lot more trips this year. Guys, listen to this. I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna stop moving and listen to how quiet it is. Well guys, it's six o'clock. It's still still pretty light out surprisingly, but it is getting cold. I just checked the thermometer and it's about 20 degrees right now. So I'm gonna hop in the Sequoia and try and warm up a bit now, but I'll see you guys in the morning. guys it's uh I think it's about eight o'clock I finally was able to force myself to come outside I uh, I was using the mr. heater buddy a lot of last night and let me tell you this thing was so nice to have it was about 15 degrees um, when I woke up around 1 a.m. in the back of the Sequoia which is very cold when you're camping I turned the heater buddy on and when I woke up in the morning it was, it was 50 degrees in the back of here, so, so much better for sleeping. Um, the one thing with the heater buddy is it doesn't usually heat up the entire area. The Sequoia is a pretty big area, so uh, I usually point it towards my head and upper body. And that area is warm, but if you went to the front seats of the Sequoia or you went all the way to the back, it's a lot colder. 
Um, it's just the smallest heater, buddy. So, you know, it, it can't heat a huge surface like the Sequoia Superwall, but super nice to have on cold nights like that. I'm gonna start working on packing some things up. Um, and yeah, then we'll probably head back. It's just a cold morning to be outside, especially with this wind. So I just made it down for the trail. The snow is all super, super hard now. It's pretty icy, so glad to have made it down without really getting stuck at all. Um, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Like always, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this, and I do hope you guys are enjoying these videos. It's been a lot of fun to get out on all of these winter camping trips, and uh, yeah, do some winter camping, something I haven't really done a ton of before this year. So if you guys have been enjoying, don't forget to like and subscribe. It means a lot and helps me keep taking all of these trips and making this content for you guys. So I appreciate it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.